Weird Fantasy Judgment Day The man roared down from the night sky. He'd come from the infinite void of space. Across the endless cosmic vacuum. He'd come from the planet Earth. He'd come in a ship of gleaming alloys, belching blue flames and yellow clouds of atomic dust. And he'd come alone. He stepped to the port amid the cheers of the robot population. Wow. man stepped from his gleaming ship. He stepped into the artificial sunlight that flooded the landing site. He extended his hand. I am Tarleton from Earth Colonization. I am here to inspect if I find that you are ready. We are ready. We have labored long and hard to perfect our society. We have experimented and discovered, planned and built, asked and answered. We are ready. Tarleton moved. To, through the crowd of orange robots that pressed around him. He stopped and questioned one. Do you know who I am? You are Tarleton from Earth. You are representative of our original creators. If you find that we are ready, all of the wonders and greatness of Earth will be ours. Tarleton nodded. The artificial sunlight danced on his space helmet. Quite right. Thousands of years ago, we placed a small handful of you upon this planet. This small handful was given the know-how to build more of you. We left you to yourselves. We hope that in time, you would develop a society worthy of inclusion in Earth's great galactic republic. At that time, all of our scientific advances, our glory, would become yours. Come, Tarleton. Let us show you what we have accomplished. Let us show you that we are ready. Leave the way. The space suit clad Earthman followed the orange robot past the crowd of metal onlookers to a sleek looking low vehicle. This is known as a mobile car. It was developed quite some time ago by NRE4. It operates by means of an internal combustion engine. Yes, good, good. 20th century level. The speedy mobile car swept the Earthman through a shiny city along streets jammed with cheering orange robots. This is our capital city. That building there is our house of delegates elected by the populace. Oh, interesting. Democratic rule. Very good. At that building, the Earthman pointed to a long, low structure. That building is our construction line and assembly plant where our population is made. Stop here. I would like to see. The mobile car pulled up before the plant, and the Earthman got out. He followed his orange robot guide into the building. This is the parts department where our units are constructed. I see only orange workers. What about the blue robot? Tartan's guide turned to him, shaking his head. Oh, we, we, we make only orange robots here. The blue robots? Well, I'll take you to their plant later. I see. Shall we go on? from the parts section to the final assembly line. Here, the skeletons are constructed. The original alloy is still used. Naturally. They move along the assembly line. Here, the internal units, motors, magnets, relays, power supplies, and so on and so forth are installed. No improvements on the original design. I see. No, we dare not attempt it. These models will be exactly like the originals. And this is the sheathing stage. Yes. Here are the orange outside shells are attached. What happens to the finished robot? He is tested and placed in the indicator where his mechanical brain is charged with all knowledge available to our society. And then? He becomes a member of that society. First, he must work on the assembly line for a short period. Good responsibility toward propagation. Good. They moved out of the plant. Then he is free to follow his choice of endeavor. A free enterprise society. Of course. After you. No, I'd rather walk. Carlton walked along beside his robot guide, surveying the sparkling city. Where is the blue robot assembly plant? The blue robots? Well, you'll have to go over to Blue Town on the south side of the city for that. Blue Town? Well, you know, they all live over there. We call it Blue Town. It's just that section. We better take a mobile bus. It's a long walk. They stood under the bus station shed, Tarleton surveying the two benches. You differentiate between blue robots and orange robots? Of course, otherwise there'd be trouble. Have to keep them in their place, you know. Tarleton not. The bus arrived. They boarded. Tarleton moved toward the back. No, up here, in front. Oh, yes. I see. 
the bus zoomed off southward to through the city. While we're riding, I could show you some points of interest. I'd appreciate it. They sped past a large, imposing structure outside a line of orange robots waited patiently. I'm a charging station. There are power units are supplied with energy when they need it. Similar to a restaurant for humans, I see. Soon, the mobile bus entered a seedy section of the city. The buildings no longer shine. The streets were crowded with blue robots. And this is Blue Town? Yes, there's the plant, the blue assembly plant. Carlton and his robot guy, a lit from the mobile bus, but as it sped off. You better go in the long term. I'll be here. Have you ever been in the blue plant? The guy shook his head. No, I hardly ever even come to Blue Town. Come in with me. I want you to. It might prove interesting. Towton moved into the building, his orange guide bowing shy. A blue robot came to meet him. Allow me to apologize for this, for the appearance of our plant, Towton. Our funds are limited. I understand. The blue robot guided Towton into the parts department. This is where our units are constructed. Notice, my friend, they use the same alloy in theirs parts as you do. I, I see. Then I'll give you some blood. Notice the internal units, my friend. The same designs. The original designs. No improvement. No difference. Exactly like yours. We, we know that, Talton. And finally, to the sheathing stage. It is only here, my friend, with the blue sheathings that a difference can be detected. But the sheathings are only outside coverings. The inside structures are no different than yours. The sheathings like that difference to the orange robots, Talton. It limits us to menial jobs, sends us to the rear of mobile buses, places us in different recharging stations, forcing us to live in a special section of the city. And when a blue robot is completed, then what? He is tested, then placed into the educator, Talton. Only this educator is a blue educator. It has the advantages of the orange educator. Tell me, my friend, would you deny that the differences between you and the blue robots are taught in your educator? I couldn't. I couldn't deny that, Tom. The educator is the parents and the relatives and the environment and the schools all rolled into one, eh? I, I don't understand those words, Carlton. No, I guess you wouldn't. You said before that this is a free enterprise society. That after an orange robot serves its time on the assembly line, that is free to follow its own choice of endeavor. I, I said that, yes. That, of course, does not include the blue robots, eh? Their choices of endeavor are limited. You are lecturing me as if though all this were my fault, Charleston. This existed long before I was paid. What can I do about it? I'm only one robot. I am sorry, my friend. Yes, I know you are only one robot. That is why I am afraid that Cybrenia is not yet ready to join the Great Galactic Republic. No, wait, Carlton. Carlton moved out of the blue assembly plant of Blue Town. The orange robot hurried after him. Why, Carlton? Why aren't we ready? Ask yourself that, my friend. Then tell your fellow robots to ask themselves that question. Carlton moved fast. The robot clanked after him. Is, is there any hope, Carlton, for us? Of course there is. Carlton stopped below his gleaming rocket. Of course. There's hope for you, my friend. For a while on Earth, it looked like there was no hope. But when mankind on Earth learned to live together, real progress first began. The universe was suddenly ours. And when we learn to live together? The universe will be yours, too. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, Carlton. The ship roared up into the night sky. It roared into the infinite void of space, into the endless cosmic vacuum. It roared toward glorious... And inside the ship, the man removed his space helmet and shook his head, and the instrument lights made the beads of perspiration on his dark skin twinkle like distant stars. The End